All right, what is going on? What is going on? What is going on? Today, I've been thinking, I read an article that was talking about what business are you in? And it got me to thinking, what business am I in? And I've been thinking about this all morning. What business am I in? What do I do? What do I set off? And, you know, what got me to thinking is every time I do one of the rich people of Atlanta videos, I get these people who don't watch the video, who come up with certain opinions because I don't think like they do. And these opinions are usually, I, I got called a coon this morning because I was talking about where I live. I want you to think about that. Sugar cooning it was the term. And this is one of these hotel died in the wool ghetto black people that feel that black unity is what's going to make things right. When I disagree, I think personal accountability is what's going to make things right. And I, I have an example of that. Asian people were not thought of that highly as recently as the 70s in the United States of America. They used to get called names. No, they weren't slaves, but they were not embraced by white people. What changed these things? They became successful. They started buying homes in upscale neighborhoods. They started starting, they started businesses. And they changed how everyone looked at them. It's like if you see a little Asian kid in a Ferrari, you think he's rich. No one thinks twice about it. In the span of less than three decades, they've changed how they were viewed as a people. Because collectively, individually, they started businesses. This became a norm. It's not really, you know, so Asian dude owns a business. This is a norm. They didn't start off that way. And this is something that black people can do and certain black people are doing. There are certain black people who have realized the path to prosperity. They've realized the things they need to do to be put on. They've realized the things that, you know, gotta get that paper, gotta get that bread, man. But there is another classification, because you know, that question, what, what business am I in? Because if you ask me on the surface, I'm an educator. I have online classes. But when you start to pull the things back, it gets really deep. Because one of the things that I do is expose you to things you never heard of. Robert F. Smith, I talked about on this channel for years ago. The richest black billionaire in the country who didn't get there through entertainment. So I expose you to stuff. I talk about the importance of mindset all of the time. I bring this up all of the time. You got to have that winner's mindset before you even start. And this is where I run into problems with Hotel Nation because I've been off of the plantation for many years. I don't suffer racial indignation. I, I don't get pro, I don't get racially profiled. I don't have all of these bad things that happen to me because I'm black. But one of the reasons that I, these things don't happen to me is because I have money. And this is the thing I keep telling people. But you have a whole contingency of black folks who say, this is why I hate Jay-Z's still uh, an in song. You cannot have that kind of thought process and free yourself from the matrix. Well, no matter what I'm doing, I'm still black. That's a limiting belief. That's a scarcity mindset. That's a weak 
mindset. And this is why, you know, I don't really look up to Jay-Z because he's an entertainer. I don't really look at the entertainers. I look up more to Robert F. Smith than I do Jay-Z because I think Jay-Z's done a lot of harmful things. Like that song. This is a limited mindset trope that many black people have. What's up, Edward? What's up, Howard? Thank you for that. The DSL Chronicles, the rich people of Atlanta was hella motivated and we need more like that. There will be more that's coming like that. Uh, Sacha, Dr. Claude Anderson said, black people, it must be who economics, error is we stick together, put their money together and it works. How come when it's black people, it's always another mission? I don't, I don't, know, I don't know where you're going with that. Thank you, Mag287. What's up, Ben, the bartender? Mag, yeah, money does change everything in your life with the correct mindset. Thank you, Devilish Robin Wilson from Dubai. So also, I teach belief. When I wrote my first book, I believed in myself. No one else did. And, you know, once again, the... I have these fights with the black hoteps because my very existence is considered cooning by these limited, low intellect individuals because I didn't do it the black way. And one of the things that you will notice that whenever some black people do something, they got to put the black stamp on it. Well, this is black. Not that this is just a business that makes money, but this is a black business. And let people be known. That kind of gets in the way of a lot of things, but these folks don't understand it because they want to have the identity first and foremost, much more than the success. So I teach belief. Self-reliance. You know, because I remember years ago, there was some people talking about me like, I don't know why Glenn and Cameron working hard on being self-reliant. I have had situation after situation in my life where me being self-reliant has saved my bacon. Uh, one time a few years ago, I was living with this chick. Well, she was living with me and she got upset and she's like, I'm leaving. Okay. Since I was self-reliant, I didn't need her to pay bills. All the furniture was mine. She just left. My life, other than from a companionship standpoint, didn't really change that much. And one of the reasons I learned this self-reliance is one time I was living with a chick. I was truly homeless. I was living with this chick, and I had to leave. I lost where I lived. I lost my girl. I lost my dog. I lost all this stuff because I wasn't self-reliant and that lesson sticks with me. You got to be self-reliant to be able to stand tall, to weather these storms. Fifth thing that I teach is the power of goals. No one talks about this stuff. It's just like, don't have no goals, just freelance it. Every written goal that I have written down, except for the new ones, I have achieved. Sometimes I don't achieve them as fast as I want to, but having a written goal directs your subconscious mind to act and move for your benefit. Let's see what's going on here. Being the bartender, the top of Jay-Z's career, and this is the knowledge he drops. Seems like he's trying to keep people down with his content. Pretty much. Because that whole video, no matter what I do, how I behave, they still going to look at me like that, is a self-limiting belief. I have dated white girls who have, like, turned against their families for me. 
So it ain't necessarily true. What's up, Anthony? What's up, Abraham? Anderson? Very few pro blacks suck at business, like 95% plus. Ben the bartender, if you're selling, you're a sellout. And that does seem to be the thought process. You don't think that's the case. Well, when I come across someone from a different walk of life, my first response isn't to hate on this person. So I would disagree with you because they come in with hate. They're not coming with like, man, brother, I don't understand. No, no. They're coming with direct, stark hate. I got called a coon this morning for talking about where I live. Talking about where I live because of the jealousy of some black people who haven't accomplished anything in life. Malik Vanderpool, well, see, that's the thing. They don't listen, they don't do no research. They hear one thing and they go off like a woman. Women go off of half-baked, half-cocked information all the time. And many of these hotel dudes who were raised by single women have no cue to deal with a masculine man. Which brings me to how to be dominant. I teach how to be dominant. And not just dominant over women, but dominant over industry. When I came out with the storage option book, I dominated this industry for almost three years. I started it. I was the leader, I had the product, I had the views, I had the websites. So I teach you how to dominate and compete. And that's a nasty word to a lot of black folks, competition. Well, you know, all we need to do is we don't need to compete with each other. We need to just work together. Sing old Negro spirituals as we work in the field. We are not those kind of people anymore. When we came here off the boat, yes, we were like that. We, we're not like that. We have European DNA. Everybody in America is a mutt, so that's no longer the way that we are. Black people have a harder fight when it comes to business. It's not the same. We get it. What's going? You know what? I'm going to disagree with you. If you start a business and you take the black label off, and you work as hard as you can, you're going to have just as much success or more success than a white person. One of the things that, you know, is once you put this black label on it, it's got to have some flavor. It's got to have some spice. You know, we know how to dance. All of that stuff prevents real success for penetrating. It's kind of like these women who like do needs to be six foot one, six foot two, 225. You're only talking about a small percentage of the population. I see profits. Thank you for the $5 super chat. White people love a well-mannered, well-dressed black man that doesn't play the victim role. They climb the corporate ladder quick. Black owned businesses are a support to sell everyone, but have the preferred knowledge or group surfer lines to do critical things. Pro blacks miss that. That's why they lean on the mouthpiece. I mean, Malik, this is the thing, you know, as a as a man. And this is one of the tenets of this channel. There are no social programs for men. This is why you got to be self-reliant. This is why you got to get your bread up. This is why you got to go out and kill dragons. Edward Anderson, being pro-black has become narrow-minded as religion or a lot of isms today. Folks just clicking up but not offering solutions. I agree with you 100%. That's funny. You have a black child. So from a genetic standpoint, nobody should say nothing.
But it's not about actions. It's about the ideal of something, Edward Anderson. Amen, amen, amen. They're in love with the ideal and they ignore the practicality of a situation. Uh, another thing I teach is how to compete. Also, I teach how to get started. You know, I'm honest with you guys. Like getting started sucks. You, you, you don't have any results. There ain't nothing going on. And it's slow. But this is the storm that you have to weather. And I teach you about expectations. Your expectations must be in line with your actions. So if there's very little action, there can't be a lot in terms of expectations. Anthony Johnson, I killed for this capitalist shit. I was homeless, down on my dick. You know, uh, for goals are imperative. 89, Dr. Funk, I'm, I'm putting this out here because the question which came from an article that was in Inc. that was by Mark Cuban that was talking about what is your business? Because I'm having to look into the things that I have teach and what people know me for. Most pro-blacks are matriarchal in nature and they're resistant to your message. Anything dominant is bad. Black men are not allowed to be dominant. And I'm talking about black men thinking that. I'm going to tell you something, Edward. When I was doing my Craigslist protocols and I would go to Google and I would try to find images of black dominant men. I always found black dominant men paired up with heterosexual or black dominant women. Now, if I would white dominant men, if you go ahead and do a search, you know, go ahead and put black dominant man in the Google machine, and you're going to come out with a bunch of homosexual stuff or stuff with women. And it is, you know, because I'm a threat. I am a healthy heterosexual, dominant black man. That is some scary stuff to the status quo because I can easily get pretty feminine white women. And that's one of the big things. That's one of the taboos. That's one of the things that they didn't want to happen, but it happened. Been the bartender, dominant over self, dominant over women, dominant over men, dominant over life. Absolutely. Folks are in love with an idea that will never happen and has never happened in life. And there's been a perfect, there's never been a perfect unity of any people. And th this is the thing because also I teach. The power of a business. You know, the Hustlers LLC, the art of holding. I dropped this corporate knowledge. And a lot of y'all are taking advantage of the knowledge. Corporate strategy. How to manage money. Branding. How to build a business. And to teach responsibility because success is about responsibility. Success bookends with responsibility. And one of the things that you've got to understand is you cannot be successful without being responsible. Because if you're not responsible, you're going to lose that success. Someone starts a business, they take their eye off the ball. Next thing you know, the business collapsed. You got to be into it because, you know, one of the reasons that I get so much flack is th for some black folks, the first time they've heard of anyone that looked like them talk about starting a business, responsibility, being the dominant masculine man, handling it, is this channel. This is the first time that young black men have gotten this message from another black man. 
Because, you know, the, the whole message, I actually cussed this dude out and deleted his comment this morning. And I said, you the real coon with your low expectation having ass. You don't feel that you can do any better. You're not a warrior. You don't have none of this warrior DNA. You don't have any of this fighter instinct. This kid, You don't have none of that. You just a little weak little bitch. And this is what I find out with the whole tip thing, because the lack of masculinity, the lack of a dominant frame is evident all over the sphere because it's like, we need to work together. Yeah, work together. Dominant men are fine working alone, working in solitude, Superman's fortress of solitude. And this is one of the things because, you know, I, I'm beginning to understand why I piss off some people. As soon as they see me, they're like, Arr! I can't stand it. This has been a common thing for a long time. Dudes will watch the videos, get the message, and they'll try to turn their girlfriend onto it. And their girlfriend will instantly dislike me. You know why? Because I'm going to teach her man how to get a better chick and she feels it. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's talking about coming up, making money. You get money. You get better. You might get rid of me. Nothing a woman likes more than sucking up masculine attention. Uh, one of my friends, he had a Facebook video talking about, you know, when he's his funeral, he wants his wife and kids to say that, you know, uh, they were the most important things in his life. Actions dictate otherwise. He runs a business. Sometimes he's away from his wife and kids for weeks at a time. So by his actions, his business is the most important thing. But he plays that verbal game because this is what society likes to hear. And, you know, one of the other things I teach you is never have a woman as your top priority in life. That's foolish. And I say stuff like that and people get mad. It's like, that's the ultimate surprise. You get married, you have kids. They're the most important thing in your life. Really? I've had this conversation with many women. I remember I had this conversation with a submissive. You know, because she wanted to be, quote, the only one. And I was like, no, there's two other ones. And, I, you know, it was honest with her. It was straight up with her. And she still acted feminine, female foolish. Because, you know, there are women out there, just tell me the truth. Just tell me the truth. You can, you, you can tell the truth. You can tell a lie. You get the same results. Because they can't handle the truth. They really can't. Let's see. Where are y'all? Uh, putting black label on anything in business is like starting in a niche and creating a niche, sub niche to your clients that limits your earning potential. Exactly, Stephen. Ben the bartender, I never my business is pro black and pro profit, no matter who buys or sells. To be honest, Asian, Latinos, and white people are my biggest customers. Get that bread, man. Anthony Johnson, my business serves all. That's how you get it. Uh, investment groups for black people is good if you want to get into it with other people that's on you. But I do know this Indians and Jews work together. A lot of people in the business world work together. I've worked deals with dudes I didn't even know. See, when you come in like this, you come in like this, you, you both on this level. You can work all kind of business deals. You, you know, once again. Wow, Rons, we have the Statue of Liberty on the East Coast. We need a Statue of Responsibility on the West Coast. I see profits, yes, the most important part of business is responsibility, discipline, and commitment. That's 90% of success, exactly. What's up, Gerald? I see profits. Dominant men don't quit. They're committed to winning from the jump. 
Thank you, Miles King. Uh, putting your ha business happiness in the hands of your partner, you're destined to be let down. What's up, Erica Nicole? Just news and speaking of wavelength. No, you, you can't. And one of the things that, you know, I impart to you is I have a lot of life experience. And this is something that I found out when I started Disruptive Mail and do start hating. Uh, there was someone who was talking about my stories like, you know, driving for Uber and having sex with this chick was not a Sunday school, uh, actually a few chicks, was not a Sunday school story. The average man in that position would be scared to take these, pick these women up on these overtures because they'd be worried about losing their Uber job. Uber for me was a way to get experience to write that book. I wasn't there because I needed it. Sierra Holly, I don't hate you. It's actually encouraged me to level up and prove myself to stay attractive to him. Sierra Holly. See, this is the thing, and we discussed this on the dominant uh, on the on the dis disruptive male. Marriage, from the traditional sense, is for people to put a pause button. I'm from the South, where traditionally people get married, then they start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I go on my old Facebook page and see people I went to high school with, and I can see folks 50, 60, 80 pounds bigger. Depending on that verbal contract of marriage, for you to stay committed to me and love me, even though I don't love myself. Even though I'm not being my best version of myself for you. See, I'm going to do a video on Disrupted Mail talking about how to have a perfect or a better marriage. Because essentially, you know, going through the list of stuff that I teach, exposure, mindset, belief, self-reliance, power of goals, how to be dominant, how to compete, how to get started, expectations, the power of a business, corporate strategy, how to manage money, branding, how to build a business responsibility. And if I sat down a little longer, I would have came up with some more stuff. Part of the education that you get on this channel is how to be personally responsible. Because, you know, one of the things that happens to people like, how many of you seen this earning app commercial? You know, thanks for looking out. Earning lets you cash out a hundred a hundred dollars. Play it. Play boy, play girl. You should have minimum two thousand dollars in the savings account. And I, this is something I've been preaching. I remember years ago I mentioned, you know, start a savings account. And I got this message from this dude. It's like, man, you know, my tooth started hurting. And I realized I had money because he was he did an automatic deduction out of his check. And he looked at his savings account. And he had like eighteen hundred bucks. And to go to the dentist was only four hundred. So I was able to get my tooth fixed and not be in hock or owe anybody any money. And it was a beautiful moment. He became self-reliant at that moment. He wrote me. I just I want to thank you for turning me on to that. And this is why I do what I do, because I turn on open minded people to things that will help them. That's one of the things that I do. I will turn you on to something that will help you. Miles King, Mr. Cameron. Oh, they ain't going to stop me. I cuss them out and keep moving because they are weak. If you think that, you know, I think that this is a good thing that people cooperate. Uh, there was this group of these men who say $50 a week, it was five of them, $50 a week for two years to get their first investment property. That's a beautiful thing. That's cooperation. We need more of that. What I teach is if you make X amount of money, how to operate and make moves on your own. Being the bartender, a weaker, unaccountable soul we see going in as a threat. Other folks see him as an advisor. Like, I, I, I've had this happen to me so many times. Like, 
hey man, yeah, I love your videos. I try to turn my girl on this, but she don't like you. My girl don't like you. My wife don't like you because they know I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. And you know what? What's happened is a lot of dudes have broken up with their wives and chicks based upon my training. Yo, man, she wasn't the good. She wasn't the best for me. I've got the emails. Raw liberating women are learning the hard, learning the hard what freedom and competition looks like, and they find out how scary it can be for them. Man, I was having that conversation with someone this morning. Sasha, that's funny you say that. Most of the friends I've had, girlfriends or wives, hated me. Good Lord, Royal. And, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, it, it's the energy. It's the dominant masculine energy because I'm not really saying nothing. You know, some of the things I said forcefully, uh, some of it was very rugged in your face. But one of the things that happens is I speak the truth. When I was doing the storage auction stuff, people was like, don't tell them it's that hard. I used to bend over backwards and say, look, this is going to be some of the hardest work you'll ever do. It'll be like moving a house two or three times a week. And that honesty got me long term customers, because if I was like, you know, I could have made more money at the front end, but I would have lost a lot of money at the tail end because it'd be like, man, Glendon lied to me. He didn't tell me this stuff is crazy. I talked about the roach units. I talked about how the storage auction people will play with you. I talked, I, I dropped it out there. I became a trusted advisor. And that's why I got people who have bought every product that I put out. And that's that long money. And I teach you how to start a business, step A, step B, step C. And I leave out all the nonsense. That app is foolish. I need my check before I get paid. Why don't you make more money? Yeah, I, I see that because it, it comes up in the earning app. Good looking at earning. And I, I don't know how this company is making money. Been the bartender. I appreciate that. You definitely helped me have the knowledge to survive anywhere in the U.S. with a thousand dollars starting capital. Royal, some women don't want a dominant male. They want a nine to five dude who they can keep their eye on. If you're with a woman like that and on a biz path, that get away immediately. Many women know when you get money, you get options, and that's terrifying to them. Man, say it again, man. Say it again. The long money advice needs to be told every day. Going back to Royal. I begin to understand why a lot of these wives and girlfriends didn't like me because I was going to set their dude on the path to have more options in the future. And what he just said, many women know when you get money, you get options. And that's terrifying to them. Um, I got a video on the disruptive male talking about the new black chick. The new black chick, she ain't afraid of competition. Uh, I see all of these hobbits and booger wolves out here. You know, you 5'2 and 250 pounds. That ain't attractive. I don't care if they make all this cute stuff in your size. That don't mean you're cute when you wear it. And part of what I teach is the more dominant that you are, you turn on her submissiveness. And, you know, I've had dudes who, you know, like break up with their chicks because your chick should not come between you and your business. And I had a guy years ago. He's like, man, I'm in the storage auction business. I got a job. My girl, she's like, I don't spend enough time with her. And I said, look, dude, you got two options here. You can cut back on your hustle, which is putting money in your pocket to hang out with your girl, which ain't putting no money in your pocket, or get a girl who understands you on your grind. He got rid of that chick and got a younger, prettier thing who was perfectly, she was an uh, immigrant, and she was perfectly content while he was out there getting it. And he's like, man, it's so different, you know? 
It's like she knows I'm working hard. She cooks meals for me. It, it's like it's a totally different experience. And this is why I put up my video living with a Hispanic woman. You get yourself a good Hispanic woman, she going to take care of you. And this is why I share all of these experiences to expose you to what's possible. I get a bunch of guys who don't like the fact that I date white women. Man, you should get you a sister. Why? I'm going to date who I want to date. I'm going to date who's perfectly agreeable to date me. And, you know, that don't look like a sister all the time. I don't have cultural loyalty for the simple fact of having cultural loyalty. I'm an observant person. I've looked at history. I've looked at where this thing is going. Jesse Him saw where this thing was going. Ron, that's funny. Earn the app is for the common man. I know. Royal, no woman on earth looks better than a million dollars. Amen, amen, amen. Ron's, if you call the war but choose to stay with your chick, you lose respect. Same in business. That's a, that's a remarkable comment, man. Royal, Hispanic women are family-centric first and understand more resources helps the family. And this, this is one of the reasons that I talk about my dating experiences. I'm going to put up a video talking about my experience with Asian women. Because if you understand that if you get your economics together, as a man, you, you, you have your economics together, you have game, you work on your body, your options are like crazy open with women. But you got so many dudes who are playing cats, who living with women because it's comfortable. Well, she got good bugs. You got them good government benefits, man. She you know, I use her car. And this gets back to the self-reliance. I would rather have you in the 19, 1991 Honda Accord that's in your name, that's paid for, than you driving some chick's car. To me, that's just a cat move. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm you know. I remember years ago when I was writing books and this dude came up, and he was swinging these keys. It's like, I have the keys to Eric Jerome Dickey's house. And we all look like, what the, that was a straight bitch move. You don't want to be flexing on someone else's house. Well, you know, many people to do today don't care. I see a McDonald's there paying their workers the next day after work, and I think the lower wage jobs are going to getting paid daily versus having to wait. Anthony Johnson, when I made a G in an hour, I was more aroused than any baddie I smashed. Once again, when you develop yourself economically as a man, you develop the dominant frame and you get your physical fitness together, the kind of women that you get drastically changes. Drastically. It's like a great idea with a solid team. People invest. When we become better, chicks ask us to invest their time and money and body with us. Jeffrey, yeah, the lives get saved on YouTube. I don't know. You must be new. I've never actually deleted a live. Uh, I don't know why Gerald's comments held for review. And how many black men can say and think this way? This is the 1% talk. I swear coming from the shit I can and growing my mind to a whole new level. And that quick money's more addictive than Big Booty Betty. Michael Campbell, I'll be honest. My girl said a nine to five is secure and likes to know where I go at all times. In business, she does like to get involved, but she, it now just encourages me while I work on myself behind the scenes.
it was definitely a solid flip. Well, once again, when women realize that you're a masculine dominant man, they're going to try to put their hands all over your life because you are so hard to replace. Being a masculine dominant man with your economics together is so hard to replace. It is hard to find another one of you. It is hard to even meet someone on your level. And this is why when you get, you take the training because you, you become self-reliant. And self-reliance is a beautiful thing because like this earning app, I mean, how, how much effort does it say, does it take to save $2,000 a month? $2,000? I thought the earning app was ridiculous, but so many people are predicated on these short-term goals and short-term satisfaction. You know, um, and I just speak from experience. I've had a few girls who, who dipped, who were like, I can't live with this because they wanted to be the, the most important thing in my life and I told them for Rift, I'm like, you, you will come second to my business because my business will take care of me in ways that you could never do. And uh, that, you know, a woman hears that and she's like, wait a minute, I ain't going to be number one. That's that ego. That's that ego. They want to be number one. They want to take all your time. But when the bills are not paid, they're going to be complaining and they're going to be looking at you. You the man, why aren't you paying these bills? Well, baby, I was spending time with you. I, I don't want to hear all that. You need to spend time with me and you need to make this money. They're kind of crazy that way. And Isaac T, I will never settle down. Women are like toilets to me. Good Lord. You know, settling down, dominant men do get married and have kids because I think if you're going to have kids, you need to be married. I think kids deserve both parents and a loving and stable household, but going on one of the things I teach as a dominant man, you get yourself together. None of this struggle, love stuff. I mean, if you get yourself a winning partner who contributes to your life and is busy savvy, you got a rare diamond. That's rare. And you know, y'all grow your business together, you grow your business together. My preference is that you do everything you can to put yourself in a solid economic state before you wipe up some chick, before you meet some girlfriend. When keeping it real goes wrong, I guess. I remember this one chick I was dating and she had a problem with me not going out on Friday nights because she was a working bee and she's like, you know, I wish you could go out with us tonight and I was like, look, you know, we ain't working out. She said, what do you mean? You, you always want to go out on Friday night. And I've told you several times that that's my money. You know, Saturday's my money day. I work on the weekends. This is what I do. And you don't respect that. So we just need to part ways. And she's like, you dumping me? I was like, apparently so. And I like hung up. A few weeks later. I get that text, hey, how you doing? I miss you. What's, what's the saying? You will lose money chasing women, but you will not lose women chasing money. Two weeks for her to come to her senses. Two weeks for uh, her to have this understanding. Also, this is something else that just flashed across my screen. Now, I've been selling Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills for years. And I've never had anyone say that I can't go to the training because it's designed for men. A lot of those courses are old and I haven't changed them. And since I have gone on record that this channel, I'm for the fellas. I got someone who wants a refund because they can't go through these courses because they're designed for men. It, it is killing me. It's cracking me up. 
because one of the things is interesting with this, and they want their money back. It's nine nine dollars. They ain't getting their money back because they already had access to the course. I'll just cancel them and keep the money. But one of the things that the messaging, because you know, I'm sitting here like, what am I teaching? And it's, as you can see, it's a lot that I am teaching, and. I'm waking people up. I'm toning, I'm skilling dudes up. I'm telling them what they need to do. I'm not saying go out and get married and have, you know, four or five kids while you work at Coca-Cola or you work at PepsiCo. I'm saying go ahead and get your, your plan together. Live your life before you get married. Ron's like this song. If you think you're lonely now, I can't be in two places at one time. What's up, Christian? Rod for real estate, absolutely. Sarah Holly, it's unfortunate because really women have been socialized to have that ego. Socialized with a belief that a man doesn't really love you unless you're number one, that causes stagnation. And that's one of the things I teach. You, you meet a chick and it's like, hey, I love you, but my business comes first. Get that clear. And you will lose a lot of these silly women, but She'll never forget you. Anthony Johnson, I tell my girl this when she complained about local events missing like that or months or a time in Cabo while accounts getting fat. Goonies girl, Sierra Holly, 100. Yeah, because one of the things that you got to understand about building a business, becoming a response, I mean, when you start building a business, you're going to hire people. You're going to be responsible. You're going to have a lot of pressure and stress on your shoulders. And you don't need the woman that you're dating to be additional stress. You don't know. You don't need her to be in your business like a ninja. And one of the things that is really, really powerful through this transition of being come indoctrinated in the hustlers kung fu way of life is you grow as a person. And this is one of the biggest problems because I've had people, I've had haters friend me on Facebook and then start talking slick. Because this one person was like, man, if we ever met, he wanted to get to the physical because my masculinity, my dominance, my success intimidated him to the point that he wanted to put hands on me. Because I was saying a lot of stuff that was, you know, probably hurting, touching those tender parts. Because I have a lot of experience in many, many different areas of life. And I talk about those experiences, and you guys seem to dig that. Was uh, Michael Campbell the worst is when your girl compares the success to the next guy she meets? Friends of friends. Oh man, I got a story for y'all. My ex wife, she did that because so and so is getting 1500 bucks in child support. So and so, you know, you need to do better so I get more in child support. Any woman that does that doesn't really care about you. And more than likely, you need to get rid of her. David Lapp sending out blessings and love. I mean, when a woman comes to you like that, she's already in the corner of disrespect that she's sizing you up with a friend of a friend's. Uh, I remember the first time I watched, she was my then wife. She's like, I could have married a doctor and I ended up marrying you. And her sisters were there and they were like, hey, Tracy, you know, that's really harsh. And But once again, this is the nature of some women because most women are not that vicious. And that was very vicious. Can't fight dragons all day, then come home and fight a queen dragon. See, this is one of the things I've experienced in my personal life. I don't have any disruption or dysfunction in my house. It just doesn't happen.
My ex fiance used to fight with me all the time about being too busy, not uh, spending enough time with her. Now I'm about to move away. She wants to get back on the train. I'm like, too late. See, one of the things that men need to do is start showing these women what success looks like and how success operates. This is one of the things that women <laughs> that's funny that women need to understand because when you tell a woman that she's not going to be number one from jump you condition her and if she chooses to leave because as Sierra Holly says that women have been socialized have this eagle that I'm number one you will never be number one in her life. And I'm also going to break this knowledge to you. If your woman gets pregnant and have a child, you automatically go to the number two. Automatically, because that child has needs greater than you. The, 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 you know, it's just going to happen. And when it happened to me, I was cool with it. You know, I was busy enough. I was working multiple jobs. But see, this is the thing. They'll say that they want to be number one. But the minute they get pregnant and have a child, you become number two. But they still expect to be number one and treated as such. Uh, I, I forget what this lady said. She said, women want equal rights and to maintain their special rights. And that is the duality of many women, which is craziness. So there's a lot of things that I teach. And I'm getting ready to do some more training. I'm currently taking a Facebook ads course, which it is deep. It is deep. We hadn't even got to, you know, all of the stuff, top of the funnel, top of mind, solution. I mean, there, there's a, the curriculum is very in, intensive and I feel like I'm back in school again. So eventually when I start running Facebook ads, uh, they're going to be successful. And I'm already running an ad because, you know, essentially Facebook operates on similar audiences. Thanks, uh, Sherrod, for the 10 bucks. Peace. Sarah, that's very true of first babies. Uh, Goonies Girl, I was fortunate enough to be raised by a mother who was a good partner for my dad when he was building his real estate business. She knew what it was to be successful since she has too. She knew how to finesse. There are many smart women that know when they have a good, productive man. And there are many women out here who will ruin a good, productive man. Because you got guys out here who are working real hard and they got to be home. And every time their wife say something, they hop, they jump. Yes, baby. Yes, baby. Yes, baby. And then they have a problem with this woman and they don't understand why. One of the things that you got to understand and I'm going to go over the list again because this is top of, I'm probably going to do another video like this. But, you know, what business am I in? What am I doing? Because I feel I'm a trainer of men on all of the critical elements that you need to have in place to have a successful life. You know, I expose people to things. I talk about mindset. I talk about belief, self-reliance, the power of goals, how to be dominant, how to compete, which is key. There's a lot of men out there who are not competing. How to get started, expectations, the power of a business, corporate strategy, how to manage money, branding, how to build a business and personal responsibility. These are the things that you get here at Hustlers Kung Fu and a whole lot more. Because I'm really having to look at my message because, you know, me living in a big house because you got people flexing all day long on YouTube. They go out and get a Ferrari. They get a Porsche. They talk about it. They don't get the same kind of hotel nonsense I get because I'm talking to, you know, because this is really my life. It's real. Uh, someone put a comment on that. You need a better landscaper. I deleted it because uh, I'm just deleting all their comments because I started off 20 years ago 
homeless. And I've been able to get to this level through hard work, personal perseverance, self-reliance, goals, beliefs, a lot of work. And that's inspiring to a lot of people. And I, I thank those people. The Azure, thanks so much for the all the wisdoms you share. Sure thing. You got a bunch of people out here who don't understand that success has a price. Success demands a price and it wants to be paid in coin. And a lot of folks don't want to pay that price. A lot of people do not want to own up to that level of responsibility. They don't want to be clear on this personal responsibility because, you know, to be successful is just way more responsibility than to exist and have a job. Because the big difference between the business owner and someone with a job is once you leave that job, you're done. You go hang out with your friends. You don't have to think about that job until you clock in the next day. Business owner, mind's going, always thinking, always thinking, always thinking. And I'm trying to train up as many people to get to that business quadrant as possible because that's where your liberation and freedom is going to happen. This is where you're going to be able to do more. This is where you're going to get certain resources. This is where your life is going to be remarkable. This is where life gets good. This is where freedom starts to taste sweet. This is where you start making more money in a month than the average person makes all year long. You, you, get, you give yourself options by adopting this lifestyle. And, you know, like I said, I'm going to make another Rich People of Atlanta videos and I'm probably do Long Island Drive because there's, there's some serious mansions over there and there's a few that are hidden. I'll have to take the drone up to, but people don't seem to understand the price that I paid to get here because I, I was just like, I had to cuss that fool out. There ain't nothing in that video that talked, you know, me being successful, me being successful living in the neighborhood made me a coon to this limited minded individual because I wasn't dripping with blackness. Because see, if you're not dripping with blackness, you, more likely you're a coon. And I think black folks need to work more on being successful than being black. And, you know, once again, there are so many uh, components to, you know, blackness. Because, I mean, you can dress funny and you're no longer black. Well, he, well, black folks don't dress like that. Black folks don't walk like that. Black folks don't listen to this kind of music. You must be a coon or a sellout because you listen to this kind of music and other stupid stuff. Steven Jameson, you can't cheat the grind. Engineer Canvas, I'm using one of your videos on how to write a book and brand and write my own book. Awesome. Blinding Buddha, they want to keep everyone down and not proceed upwards. We have many people like this in the Latino community. Interesting. Dear Zur, I got your full pack and it's been outstanding. Thank you. Every man must save themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the thing is, you must think and become something to be somebody. And this is one of the things that I teach. Because once you start a business, you're going to get so much respect. Your life's going to change. You know, once it gets to that where the road evens out, because in the beginning, it's going to be rocky. It's going to be hard. Like I'm going through it right now with my new uh, Facebook groups and pages. I'm starting from scratch. Facebook page started with no likes. I got one up to 600 because I'm running paid traffic to it. Green is the new black. Jamal James Lewis, thank you for all the help, Glennon. I put my two-week notice, working on my business full-time and some Uber on the side. I haven't seen my daughter in months taking control of all that. Thank you. Wow, man. That's deep. 
Some people need to leave the field compliment that you're teaching on YouTube in your courses. You know, a lot of people don't want to be responsible. A lot of people want the results of folks who've been responsible and successful without the responsibility and success. And they're trying to cheat the game and that's just not going to work. So one of the things is you got to respect yourself and love yourself to take enough action to change your life. So that's my message today. So hopefully it reaches y'all in a good place and I will see y'all later.